this juncture. I Okay. So today we're looking at literacy approach, um, approaches to recover um, any hero of deficiency that our students actually have obtained over the COVID-19 period. Um, I must give honor to those persons that have assisted in us reaching this milestone. I, I know that everybody loves a good story and I have a story myself to share. When I, when I started with my master's, I did a course where we had to look at um, social um, agency. What is it that you can give back to your community? How can you transform your community? My plan from the school that I was going was that I will come back and impact the education system in a dynamic way using technology. This is what we're doing today is just a, a, a small little input as to what I would love to actually carry forward. So I hope that you will get something from this. Um, before I go forward again, I want to say thank you to all the members of my, my staff, the Old Arbor Bay Primary School that is here. I have the entire staff on board with me today. So I want to big up, like to say that my principal, Mrs. Sandra Clark Morrison, and all the members of my team that are here to support and to be a part of this session. All right, also, the contributors for this presentation today are Ms. Arita Ari Smith, Ms. Natalie Evan Smith, Sharon Kirkland, Ms. Tasmanica Beckford, Kenesha Johnson, and Stacey Cumming. Because of the lengthiness of our presentation, it has been cut in two. So we are across room one and five. So we are across presentation one and five. And the other members that are not here are in uh, presentation five, and they're looking at using literacy approach, using um, music and art to enrich um, literacy. All right, so we're gonna jump into the mix of things. As you know, we're looking at use of technology and technology is used to enhance literacy by using its multi-sensory approach um, appeal. And what it does is that it enhances fluency and comprehension and builds vocabulary. The teacher, each teacher, and you will know yourself that you are able to work with different persons. And I, I, I can admit that, that we work with different students at their independent, um, doing independent work while we're maintaining that zone of proximity, your ability to interact with the others and be able to pull out of themselves um, the four C's so that they can actually maximize their potential as readers. No, this presentation is created for us to identify problems um, faced with struggling readers to provide educators with intervention, that is you and I, um, activities that we can assist our students with so that they can become fluent readers. Why fluent readers? Because when a child is not fluent, that child will not be able to comprehend and then therefore will not be able to understand what is going on and be able to actually learn from whatsoever information that that person is actually reading. So whatsoever text that they're reading, we want to ensure that they get a chance to delve into it. If I'm going a bit too fast, don't be afraid to use the chat. All right, I am going to bring up the chat in a while, but tell me if I'm going too fast because I want to maintain the time and, co and cover the juicy section of our presentation. No, I want, I want to, I place this as a part of our, um, of the presentation, give our students time. And there's a reason why I placed this on and I want us to look into it. There's a saying that goes like this. It says a piano teacher sees, and even a person that does sports or any other activity outside of our regular classroom, they will take 30 minutes to do an instruction, but they will send their students off and say, spend at least 10 hours or more in terms of reinforcement, them building the, 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 um, the understanding and reinforcing the concept before the next session, before the next class. But when it comes to us as teachers, we spend more time talking, one, and we spend the same 10 hours talking and testing and send the only the half an hour actually allowing our students to read. So hence I'm asking us, let us allow our students to spend time reading. Reading comes in many gamuts and we want to ensure that our students get the time to interact with the material enough for them to become expert at what they are doing. When we look at our athletes, they spend so many hours practicing. Then we ourselves need to ensure that our students also spend many hours practicing so that they can be good at reading. In 30 seconds, 
Let us list all of the problems that you associate with a struggling reader. So let me see all those persons that are ready to share in the chat. And if you can, can raise your hand, open your mic, and we can have a discussion quickly, just in a second or so. What are the problems that you see that your students are facing coming out of COVID-19 in the era of reading? All right, so I'm seeing Latanya. All right, let me we may go ahead, Latanya. Yes, good morning, everyone. Good morning, colleagues. Good morning. Yes, I I am a teacher at Crawford Primary and Infant School. And um, I realized that because majority of my students were not online, you realize that they're having problems with letter sounds. Um, you know, they, they, they can't sound out a simple word, three letter word and so on. And, you know, it, it kind of set them back, set mm -hmm. them really back. So I realize that is one of the problems. And so I have to be starting from the basics just to get them to where I would want them to be. All right. Thank you very much. Anyone else? All right, Stacy, can you share what is in the chat with us, please, quickly? All right. So some of what we're seeing in the chat is that lack of interest, lack of parental support, lack of motivation or comprehension. Some persons are saying decoding vocabulary skills, making inferences. Um, struggling to understand, lack of um, knowledge of letter sounds, lack of phonemic awareness. So those are some of the comments we're seeing here, frustration. Okay, all right, thank you, Stacey. I think we went over the 30 seconds, but nevertheless, all of these are right of the alley as to what we are, we are going to look at today to assist you um, in uh, reaching your students. All right, so, quickly. So here are a few that we have, we have actually looked at. The fact that there's a lack of skill um, of a fluent reader, read below the grade level, struggle with comprehension, phonics and vocabulary, lack confidence, as you said, lacking motivation. So we see all of these things and guess what? The technology offers that ability to motivate them. We talk about it as being gamification, having fun while learning. All right, so let us get into the meat of, of things. What are the approaches that we can take um, to assist our students as we go through? There are several that you have already looked at in terms of using technology, the one that we're emphasizing today. We have peer shared echo and repeated and guided reading, all right? We have you working with a combination of text and audio and video. And especially for persons that are not reading at the grade level and you want them to build comprehension, it is much easier for them to build comprehension in isolation by using an audio clip than having them to actually decipher a text. So we're gonna talk about that as we go through. Use reading theater to create, an in to create interest and build skills in reading. Let a sound and relationship, picture and word association and onset. Identifying sound initial, medial and final position of the word and segmenting sentences. So, the first um, approach that we want to take is sequencing and repetition. I might be saying, hmm, sequencing and repetition. Well, let us see how this works. We are going to cover the various strands in terms of um, literacy from phonemic awareness right down to comprehension. So one example of how we can build in terms of sequence and repetition is that when you're planning your lesson, across your weeks. And we have an example here for week one and week two. When you start out as um, was, so, was spoken of in terms of letter sound, using, using the Jolly Phonics method, um, you start out with the letter sounds S, bus, at, all right? S-A-T. 
But when you're going to the second week, you maintain those three letter sounds and then you build on them. So here we see that we are continuing, we're repeating, but we're following a particular sequence. We do blending and as we blend, we also continue with the words that we have actually blended the first week. We add them back to the second week um, list of blends. And then we add in the vocabulary. And as you have these vocabulary, you build on them for the second week. And you take these vocabulary words, you take the words that you use when you're blending. And when you're doing it, you can play a number of games, whether you are having online games, as we're going to talk a lot about today, or you're going to go low tech. I'm using word cards, sentence strips, or, or bingo, or a stake on the letter. You can also do those things. All right. So what is it that we do now to build fluency? You start with simple sentences, um, especially for emergent um, readers. And you start with something like, I am a boy, I'm a girl. But when you go to the next week now, you had the new vocabulary words to the same sentence. So you're repeating, all right, and you're building your vocabulary while you're actually having the sequence taking place and the repetition. All right. So these sentences are constructed using the words that are from the vocabulary and it allows you now to, to as you blend and also build out the vocabulary that you're now reading and utilizing the vocabulary words. And you yourself can sit and you can actually write your own pieces instead of just relying on Instead of just relying on the presenter, um, the persons that is actually um, in terms of the students or, or somebody that have created a book, you yourself can create your own paragraphs, create your own um, text for them to actually use. And here is a simple example. From week one, you have, I am a boy, I'm a girl. And then you ask the question, who does a girl see? And the person is able to pick up because no, he or she is able to read this text. For week two, you continue with the same vocabulary words and you are asking similar questions. What does a boy see? What, what do we see? Because we have changed the, 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 um, the sentence. We can see cats, we can see dogs. So the person now has a, have a more dynamic um, um, appeal in terms of the, the structure of the sentences and they're adding to their vocabulary. And this is really starting with those that are from grade one moving into grade two and those that are really emergent readers at any level. All right, so we have, as we go to this presentation, you'll get the opportunity to actually pick up the presentation in a classroom. So if by any chance I am too fast, I'm asking you to just be with us. You'll get a chance to get the presentation outside of this session. All right, so let us get into the mix of the thing. We're looking at various steps. So we look at step one, which was really sequencing and repetition. Now we want to go into using visual drills to maximize learning to practice. Um, when, when you spoke, you say um, one person make mention of letter sound and we want to start there. Um, and CVC words, knowing CVC words are simple CVC words. So I'm gonna ask now for Ms. Stacey Cummings to share out starfall.com. We're gonna work with starfall. We're going to work with um, reading bear. We're going to click on a number of others. All of these are hyperlinks. So as we show them, you will be able to interact with them. But she has a number of links that she will share in the chat as we go through. So I'm going to go low tech first and then we move into the high tech section. This allows our readers to learn letters and to produce the sound in isolation. And the method that we're looking at is, is, is stepping away from the students at uh, the gradual release um, process. So when you use a technology, you do, you do not have to be in the classroom or up front. You have the proximal um, development area in terms of them being able to interact with you and gain knowledge from a higher level. But at the same time, they are on, them, they are on their own independent learning. All right, for instance, if you have a child now, and I want you to pick up as we go through, um, in terms of Starfall, some person might be acquainted with Starfall. Um, and your child doesn't know letter sound, it's easy now for you to actually manipulate um, this um, platform. You can send the link directly to WhatsApp for the child to actually utilize, or you can add it to your classroom and you can actually cater for the students using different um, um, rooms or different sections for them to actually see this themselves or in isolation. One method that I've utilized is that after using the IDRI, what you actually do is to say to Johnny, Johnny, 
they let us um, the letters that you do not have you do not know let um, the songs for are a b c d so these are the challenges that you have i'm sending you to star fall you're going to go and you're going to practice all right so you're going to do the activity so johnny would have gone to um this side because you'd have shared the link with him you'd have done it in class to so actually show him how to use star fall and you'll be able to go through on your own. and be able to learn the letter sound, all right? And interact with the platform instead of you just sitting there. So you'll be at his tablet or you'll be at his computer, whichever device or the phone, all of that works. And you just keep on clicking through on what is, and you repeat what is there. And you would have learned the letter sound along with some vocabulary that comes along. All right, so. That is just a, 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 a tiny look at um, Starfall. Um, I hope you're seeing, tell me if you're seeing my screen, my switch over. Am I, are, you still, are you seeing Starfall or are you seeing my PowerPoint presentation? I didn't remember to switch over. Stacy, can you see? We're seeing Starfall. Awesome, awesome. All right. Now, Starfall comes not only with um, the aspect of using the alphabet, it has a wide range of resources that I want to share with you. So I'm just gonna quickly switch over. I'll be switching a lot, so work with me if I'm going too fast again. Stacey, tell me if I'm going too fast. Um, a part of the, this, the Starfall platform is that they have multiple resources that I've used over the years. So for teachers that have never been familiar with it, um, here, are a multiple, here are multiple resources that you can actually use. For all the letters, they are giving you worksheets that you can work with. All right. And you can type in the chat if what we are sharing is of any use to you. So Stacey can share as we go. We want this thing to be interactive. All right, and you can also start interacting with the platform. So hopefully Stacey um, has started sharing the link in the chat. So we have a number of what we call free resources they have in, uh, that you can actually utilize. I've printed them out and I've used them and they are multiple. You just go to search for what you need and you will find them, all right? And they are, it's not limited to these that are here. All right, so as you go through to the various parts of the platform, you will actually see other, other sections that you can cover. All right, going back, moving away from Starfall, there is a beautiful one that I love. It's called Re, um, Reading Bear. And this is awesome. All right, so as I share, I want, I'm just gonna scroll through quickly. I want you to tell me if this will be of any use to you. So Stacey, you can actually share. All right, so I'm just gonna scroll through first for you to see. So it's readingbeer.org and she'll be sending it out in the chat for you to actually see. All right, so let's look at it in depth now. For instance, I'm starting with chart A. Now it offers a creative way of actually presenting the CVC words or students for learning um, um, letter sound or sound symbols correspondence to be able to um, sound out um, CVC word. You start with sound it out quickly. Let me sound it so the student will sound it. Then the audio flashcard will come up. There's a silent flashcard for this child to actually say the sound of the word. There's an audio sentence and it follows with a silent sentence for the child to read. All right, so we can start with some of those. Though. So now is the child's turn. Can somebody open their mic? Let us do it together. Can I have a student, please? Alison Dennis, what about you being my student today? Okay, can I have another student? Nathaniel McCog. Yes, ma'am. 
All right. So mm -hmm. let's go ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah. All right. Map. Awesome. Oh God. I don't want to do nothing this morning. I don't know. Like oh, go by computer. But why do we have to go out today? With me again. All right. So this is the process that it goes through. Um, Cece, what are they saying in the chat regarding this particular um software or tool? All right, so some persons are saying useful links, um, interesting ideas. Okay. Um, someone is also saying they like the activities that are there. Awesome. All right, so I think this will be very good because if you're working with the Iraq checklist, it will actually, as a section for the CBC words that you can check off to say that this is the software you're going to use for that, but let us all use in Starfall. And we're going to go to some of the stuff we're building with so many things that we can actually work with. So you can check them off to see what is it that you're going to do. I'm going to tie this together with a lesson that I did for the summer school, digital summer school that went through the entire day using different um, online platforms. And I'm planning to build out something for upper school with the same thing. So that is just a few. We have a number of others we have in terms of the phonogram app. And I'm watching the time, time going. Um, you can actually use for the older kids. They may not want to go into the old matter of actually, you see, they can just go to and click and learn the sound instead of playing the game if they don't want to. Depends on your students that you want. They can, you have different um, tools that you can actually use. Now for those that don't have any internet at school, we have this site now that allows you to build out your site word, bingo, and if you don't, uh, you want to use your, Snake and the letter, um, um, say the letter. you can use from Dutch, um, you can use from the fry site word list, and you can build. And there are other different um, site word activities that they allow you to do from this site. And I said, we're going to share everything. So we're just going to move to quickly for time as again. So and we have so much to cover. All right, Snake and the letter, another one, same site, but they give you the opportunity now to choose from the, um, the site word list and also create your custom. Um, stick on the letter. So quickly, I just choose one quickly and show you. Say so we choose right, choose a hundred. All right, and we click create, and it, the computer generates it just like that. All you need to do is to click download or print, and you can just back these, and you have your kids ready to play snake on the. All right, and it's give you a big one to so just paste and paste them together, and you're ready to play with your kids. So you don't have to worry to start drawing and all those stuff as you have done before. So the low, um, low tech is there, the high tech is there. All right, so we have moved away from um, sound symbol correspondent using visual drills. What about auditory drill? There are some nice ones that we can actually use. You can go back to the low tech that we, we had before, or we can actually go into using something like a, a sight word smash. All right, look at this. All right. And we can actually go look at it. I, I click on something different. So, all right. It does not until I choose it. So it poses foolproof. So it forces a child to learn the word itself. All right. Um, there's another one that I love also CIT games. It offers the same appeal, but it offers far more words. It has 15 um, levels of words that the students have to. And this is really popular because the boys would rather the dinosaur and the saber tooth than the girls. So we're looking at can. All right, next. So 
So we see all the high frequency work coming out here and we can actually, instead of just putting them on a board, we can have our students playing these. You choose a list, so you say to them, this is your list and you're going to cover. And you must know by the end of the week or the, or the end of um, whichever time you will give them, you ask them to create a video to show that they have learned these words or what you could do is print out the certificate at the end of each, uh, each segment for them to show that they have covered and they have not gotten any wrong. And so it depends on the dynamics of your classroom that you're actually working with. So we have a number of them that you can use. Um, Internet for Classroom, which you're gonna come back to, um, you're gonna actually be able to use a number of different, from different grade levels, different activities that are there in terms of high frequency word that you can actually use, utilize. All right, let's just move on. Okay, I clicked on something. All right, so now we're looking at consolidating. So we're maximizing our learning um, to consolidating it. So let us see, have anyone used Quizlet before? Can I see a raise of hand? Quizlet? No, we have looked at high frequency word, but what about content word that must be learned? So most of the time we'll say it work is, um, let us make um, a glossary and find the meaning and write a sentence. But Quizlet offers far more um, to the learner. So let us jump into it quickly and see, oh, it will assist your child. We can have another session. We can talk about creating tools, creating um, software, so we can work on that at another time. But here is an example of Quizlet, how it is in, it being used to enable them to actually consolidate the information, not only learn the words, learn the meaning of the words, learn how to use the words um, appropriately and in context. All right, so we are, this is from social study and they're looking at a number of words that they need to learn from the grade five curriculum. All right, we have ancestor and you have created the flashcard and what you do is that the meaning goes to the back so the student is learning. The student will walk to the flashcard level, then learn level, then the right, then the spell and then the test. All right, so let us quickly jump to so the child learned all of these, all right? Clicking through, all right? So you have learned all of that information. All right? And each time the child would have flipped it over to learn the meaning of the word. All right, trying to go to as fast as possible. So you'd have allowed the child to do all of that. All right, then this is um, brilliant, all right? And um, it gives you the chance to, um, to actually go now to the learn mode, which is a second level, or you can go back to the flashcard level and the child moves over to the next level. And all of this is being placed in a, I notice now this, the, the meaning comes up, I have to now be able to select because yes, I have studied them, I've learned them. Now I'll be able to tell which one is a large plant, a farm, in, in a tropical or subtropical climate. And I know that mm, that cannot be colonization. It must be a plantation, all right? And it keeps going until you have done the learned mode and then you will have gone back down. You can do your matching, you can do your tests, all right? So watching the time and we're just gonna quickly spin. You'll have the opportunity to interact with it yourself. So let's just quickly go back to the flashcard. So here, the effective, it effectively organizes and integrate content, facts, ideas, and concepts and skills, and make it easier for students to remember and to make their own connection after receiving explicit ex instruction and scaffolding. It's um, revising purposefully to meet objectives and learners. And that is what I'm consolidating me for our children. And it is a great answer. All right, so, so what about those students now? They are, thank you. All right, thank you. I'm moving too fast there. Guided and repeated reading. So we want to maximize our practice through guided and repeated reading. Here are some, are some beautiful sites. The Ministry Book Fusion site is great and I love for us to actually have all our students registered on this platform so we can actually be able to utilize the guided reading material. They are, not only do we have um, the Ministry's library, there are other libraries that are there that we can utilize. 
And you notice that it's not limited just to the reading books that are there. All right, so you will see other books that are also there. All right, so I'm, I'm gonna jump quickly out of the ministry, just gonna click back on Book Fusion. All right, okay, should I jump into another library? Libraries, sorry. All right, I love to use the Book Start Library. It's the one that I, the one that I love to use. And it has, offers a number of read aloud books that allows your students to be able to interact with the material if they are not reading at the grade level and you can still offer them the opportunity to try to locate a read aloud book. Should I have a preference one. All of these are read alone. So let me just choose one. Hopefully, it'll come up fast. Read now. What I do for my students that have not registered for it, what I do is open it just like this, go up to the top, copy the address, paste it in, um, in the classroom, or you place it in WhatsApp, they are able to read the book nonetheless. So there are ways around them not joining the, the classroom or not joining the library. So your students will still get the information that is necessary for them to be able to participate in the activity. All right, so if you notice I'm clicking through, it's gonna start reading. How did we get there? All right, so, we can use these books, especially for persons, students that are not um, fluent in reading and we want to build comprehension because when we're going through the week, we're, we're actually doing sequencing of the lesson and repetition. We want to ensure that we're covering all different aspects of reading. So we want to ensure that comprehension is built on. We cannot wait until a child is um, fluent to say that we're going to build comprehension. So what you could do is use read aloud. You can use a karaoke music, um, you could use um, a song, um, anything that you will actually offer some amount of audio for them to actually be able to see and to interact with the, the words. Immersive reader also allows them to do that. So there are different ways to get around and then you focus on the comprehension, then ask them the, the questions at a different level, inference, um, literal level, um, enabling them to understand the concept without actually have to be focused on decoding the words to understand the meaning. So hence us looking at the audio, um, looking at auditory drill, guiding them in terms of them actually using the auditory, um, um, the books that are audio books that they can actually be able to participate. Um, Starfall offers a capacity for them to also utilize audio books. Um, so they can also go there. We have Storyline that has a great listing of books that are there. We have um, free children books. So all of these are, that are here, I've linked them so you can actually work and there are many others that we can share, all right? Um, Miss Morrison, go ahead. Sorry to to break you a minute there. Um, when you were presenting on the Quizlet, um, a few persons saying that they have used that. However, the children still lack retention and and the focus. But I just want to give another option. There's another app or website out there that is called Get Epic. On that website, yes, there are yes. several several yes. books that can spark interest. You know, when the students like a certain topic, the books are out there relating to different topics. You even have books where you can use to teach your lessons. And when you use those books, the children can actually click on a word that maybe they did not know that word before, or it's the first they're seeing that word. And mm -hmm. it can also provide the meaning for them. Yes. So not only will they be finding out the meaning of the word, but they will be reading something that they love. And I think that that can spark interest and help them to focus while learning the meaning of the word as well. Yes. And to build on what you just said, um, immersive reader, that is one of the things that we want to look at, especially for teachers that will be writing their own materials and want the students will interact with it the audit, um, using 
the audio uh, auditory level, them hearing whatsoever it is, is written, they can actually use the immersive reader, write their books, allow them to color code it. Just like we have picture books, we can add, a, add that aspect to it. All right, so there are so many materials out there that we would love to cover, but we can't do that at this time. So we'll just share this little bit. So we're gonna build out um, going into the summer program, going into the new school year. Here is another one that we want to look at now, looking at vocabulary building. We have the spelling bee and it goes up to grade 12. We have um, staff all that is for the lower students. Um, we have internet for classroom that has a list according to the grade levels of different um, spelling activities that you can. And the internet for classroom um, merges or bring together a number of websites. So it's, it, it's, it, it, these teachers have actually catered or actually bring together these different um, materials for um, other teachers to utilize on the internet for a classroom um, website. So let us get go into the spelling bee. Now, if you notice spelling bee starts with the intro, then it goes down. Hope you're seeing my screen. Let me know if you're not. It should be seen. Spelling bee interactive, everybody. Yes, we're seeing it. Awesome. So even though you can allow your child to, to start at what um maybe at a grade one level and work up to grade 12, it doesn't matter. Just for them to actually start working with it because it's spelling in context. It's not spelling in isolation. All right. So if I start at grade one and I click begin, it will actually read for me. All right, so it read the story for you and it's gonna ask you to spell. If the child is unable to spell big. So we're asked to spell big. If the child cannot spell big, we click on the question mark. It will repeat. If the child still cannot spell, you can click, you can choose. It gives you an the opposite of small. All right. And you can still spell the word from here if you want. So no, you have to spell art. All right, I hope this one will help those persons. And you, you keep on going to um, spelling all of that, you check it. I move up all the grade levels. So this is great for your students to actually spell in context instead of spelling in isolation. All right, we can't go through all of this. So we're just gonna move on. We have this dynamic tool now that we can actually use is learning through cubing. You know, some teachers are saying, oh, I don't want my big boys and my big girls, upper school students, or even students at um, the high school level. We don't want to teach them letter sound and um, letter names and all those things in isolation. So the cubing method, and this can be used for anything, can be used for maths. Uh, all you will have to do, cubing is an instructional strategy or tool that enables students to deepen their understanding, all right, of the concept. And what they will do is that you will actually allow them to flip the cube and answer the questions. What is the name of the letter? So the, and in this case, we're looking at letter P, make the sound of the letter. And you can toss it around the room if you're doing like that. And what's your, wherever your big finger land on or index finger, you'll have to um, do that and draw a picture or you can work in a group or, or an individual. So you, all you have to do is make the, the cube and explicitly teach the concept that you want to um, the child to learn and use this now as the means of reinforcing or maximizing their learning. They have to give three words. They have to draw a picture, use the word in sentence. All right, all of this allows them to build on their knowledge. Now, any topic or concept, as I said before, can be used. It improves a variety of literary skills by using a deliberate phonemic awareness, phonics, vocabulary, spelling, comprehension, um, grammar, anything memory, because it allows you to remember all these things. It builds a child's many, it encourages differentiation. It improves students' critical thinking and collaboration because they can work together as a team in, in tools. It can also be used in the 5E teaching model. So you can use it for your engagement and then move into your exploration 
uh, depends on how you choose to use a Cuban method. And the other can go on, on the internet and research it and get a chance to see other ways in which it is utilized. All right, so we're down to looking at reading comprehension. And there's a site that I, I love. All right, our two sites. Um, there are three of them. There is one which is an which is, uses artificial intelligence, which is reading the, um, therapy um, org. That one, the student will have to sign up on with their parents, and then the software will take them through the whole process of being um, good persons that can actually comprehend or build their reading comprehension. It's an adaptive software. So I'll encourage you to try that one out with your students, but it's a working relationship. You will have to have a partnership with them and their parents, or you yourself will have to step in and act as a parent and have that partnership. But let us look at the others that are there that we can work with. We have reading works, all right? And we have also ELC study zone, which we're gonna start with that one. It has some fables, which I, I kind of love because they, 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 they let you laugh when you learn from them. You have different um, reading levels. You have upper, beginner, lower, intermediate, intermediate level. And all of these, they, they open up into um, dynamic books, all right, at different levels. So you have grammar, but we're looking at reading, so we're going down. So it, the books allow them to actually be able to listen also and to read. So they have read aloud, they are read aloud books. All right, so I'm going to start with Nazardin and the pot. We have, it has three aspects. It has the reading comprehension. It has the recreating of the story. So the same story that they read in the comprehension, the students will have to recreate it because they'll be given phrases or four parts of the story to put back in the correct order. So it's teaching sequencing also. It allows them to summarize. So they'll be spelling also because they'll be filling in the gap. So this, I love this site because it's not only just reading comprehension, it does a number of dynamic things uh, for them to actually build their reading ability. So let's go into doing one. I'm right, just looking at aspect of it. So you click on it, you can read a story for them. All right, so we get a chance to hear that. The questions are to the side. The only thing about this website is that you'll have to scroll down. The student has to be taught that you have to scroll down to go to the next exercise because that's where the link is. Now, this is where you, the students, after reading the story, answering the questions, and the questions will pop up, the answer, the correct answer immediately pops up and, and, and tells you that you're um, either right, the response, either right or, or wrong, and it will actually guide you for the comprehension. Now you're reconstructing the story, recreating the story, and it starts out at 100, but each time you get, the, get it wrong, it decreases um, your, your score, but as you, start to get it right it also start to increase so if you start by saying this is the first one you know this is 100 all right and each time you click the right one but i click one wrong you notice i'm no longer at 100 so i'll have to be able to read and retell the story correctly and the, the thing about this site is that they can go back and they can restart it all over again until they have got it right let's jump to the next exercise uh, so here and now, same passage, but now they are spelling, all right? So they'll have to know the story to be able to spell Nazarene dash apart, so they have to borrow. If they don't know, they can ask for int, and it starts bringing up the letter, and if you press the int straight to spell the word, which some students will do. So they have to be guided, but at least they'll get a chance to be able to, um, spell these words and they will uh, go back to content after they're finished, they click check to see how well they do it marks out of 100. They can go back and they can go back to the series of um, passages that are there. All right, can I get a feedback on this? What do you think about this site? Any response, Miss Stacy? All right, so far we have one person saying amazing, another one interesting and interactive. Um, Garrett says totally great. Sandra, no, no, that's where my interest is. Um, other person saying interesting and awesome as well. All right, great. 
just want to know that it's assisting. Um, the other one that we had is um, Reading Works. Now, Reading Works, you'll have to go in and sign up, but it's great, especially um, for the grade five curriculum that talks about peer, peer um, passages. It has a number of peer passages that you will have to work with. So you'll have to go in, you'll have to sign up, you have all the grade levels and you will get to build out your classroom and you can do it all. the free content curriculum, everything is there and I've used it. So I'm suggesting that as many persons as possible, you can go in as a, as a class and actually build out your room and you can use the reading works. As we said, we're, time is without, it's three minutes to 10, we want to work with time. So we'll not be going into all of them. Uh, another one that we want to look at is, reading ecb.org oh i went into the student one so i'm on the student one this is the student one um platform is there and also the teacher platform teacher platform carries um lesson plans also outlines as to how to use it now into the book is a great um reading comprehension but i must say this one is an american it's american based it's not the um it's not a jamaican thing so guess what the content is going to be about american history so if you're, you're not interested in that, maybe this one is not for you, but it allows you to, you don't see many software that teach you about using prior knowledge, making connections, questioning, visualizing, inferencing, summarizing, evaluating, and synthesizing. This platform allows you to do that. When you go in, the students will be asked if you're using English or bilingual, they will choose, they will actually either put in for the first thing you put in, and you get a key. So, here they will ask you to actually, I'm gonna skip login and see if I will get in. Normally I would have logged in. But the area, you choose a reading strategy that you want the student to cover. You want to do questioning, all right? Evaluating, prior knowledge. Most of the time we time to talk, start with prior knowledge because we wanted to build that. If you want to save your work, please log in before, uh, just not saving. So let's just um, skip login. All right, so each time you do the activity, it will give you this explanation for um, all of the different strategies that you will, you'll, um, your students need to learn. And what you'll actually do is that they will be given a video, the video to watch, so you can try again, try it, your, try it yourself, actually take to integrate different activities. So you're going to try reading, you're going to find the prior knowledge that um, associates with a particular highlighted text. So it builds the student's prior knowledge. If you want to do inferences, whichever one, all of these activities, but as I said, some of them are skewed to the American um, history, so it depends on what you're doing. All right. What do you think of this one? Anyone? All right, so one person have commented so far, technology is excellent. And I totally agree with that. It can provide numerous options for us to reach our children. Awesome. awesome. Someone said I like the flexibility in the activity. Mm -hmm. um, another person said great for slow learners. And Miss Ramsey said, um, so you mentioned that most of the information would relate to the American system. However, Ms. Ramsey said it can work with changes being made to it. Okay. All right. So that's we're leaving that side. So all of them are hyperlinked, but we share all this. You'll actually get a chance to interact with it, as we say. All right. So we're moving on now. We're, step, we're coming closer to the end. Um, reading comprehension. Now we want to get into internet for classroom. 
All right. And so this is where we determine where, whether our students are reading or they're not reading because they can be good word callers. They can be in terms of how fluent they are in terms of their read and um, how, they, they, they process it, how they actually say the words. And yet still, when we ask them the question, they're unable to answer the questions, especially when you're doing their post or pre-IDR um, assessment. So how do we assist them without us have to always be there teaching them, having to always be there with them? In a gradual risk release method, we can use this platform. It has a built-in curriculum, all right? And what you would do, what have I believe, because there are so many sections to this website, the section that you're going to go is the grade level help. Repeating, grade level help. And what you'll do to go over on the grade level else, you go to the grade that you are in, you go to skill builder, you go to language arts. If you want to go down to math or social studies, it's up to you. But we're doing language arts, so you click on that. All right, so I have already linked this one and we are um, we're in grade one. All right, we could use others. For instance, I often use it when I was in grade five. All right. So it, notice what when I did that, it went straight to giving you a built out curriculum, you call it syllabus or whatever, covering from grammar to reading, the general reference. And whatever they have supposed that the child should learn at the grade five level, they have linked here. What I would have done is sometimes go back to the grade four because the grade four and the grade five tend to, and grade six tend to carry the same um, reading um, strategies or skills that they should actually know our uh, comprehension strategies are skills that they should know. So I, I intertwine because the activities are similar for grade four, five, and six. So for instance, you wanted to do like context clues or you want to do cause and author's purpose, main idea. That is one of the ones that are always on our reading exam. We can choose through many activities. You have a Jeopardy game. All right, you have million here, uh, million idea, main idea, million here, sorry. You have the main idea, um, the lightning bolt one. We have different activities that are there. One thing I must say to you, do not click on the pictures. Click on see more. The pictures will only give you a larger picture of it. It says it down, you click to enlarge. So therefore, do not click on the picture. It does not take you to the site, but click rather on see more or click on the particular topic for you to actually go to it. So if we choose one, we can actually play the game. Let us see if we can get rich today, right? Anybody? Anybody with me? We ain't getting rich. Well, in that answer. All right, so you have, have touch screen. So the touch screen is for those that are using their tablets. We're using it. So we're going to start and we're going to play. And it tells you you will get an um, entirely new problem, remove one correct one show. So we're just going to play the game. Please after we're starting out at a hundred dollars we can earn after we have done that can i have somebody to play with me please all right can somebody actually open your mind read for me and choose the answer let us see how we go anyone sharon gail are you with us there are many great forms of exercise you can ride a bike jog or even take a walk some people even prefer to send a letter Find one you enjoy so that you can stay healthy. All right, so we're looking at main idea. You have caught the concept and you want to reinforce one, reinforce the topic. So which sentence does not belong? All right. We can say it in the chat for those words. So we call this one sentence one, two, three, and four. Let's see if we can blow the chat in a, in a second or so saying which one does not belong. Some people even prefer to send a letter. All right, anyone else? Anyone else? What are they saying in the chat, Miss Stacey? Yes, that's the same option we're getting in the chat as well. All right, so you have earned yourself a hundred dollars. I know they, they are excited because they're earning and they are doing the little things. They keep on playing and going through. All right, so not just one game, but there are many other games. And as I said, because at time we can't belong, right? So we're moving on from that one. So you can go through, explore this, this site, it's great. It's great, awesome. Remember we go from kindergarten, we go from grade one, you do the same thing, go across, all right. Go to language, go over, all right. And it's gonna actually open, give you your little curriculum, you go through, 
If you want to syllabic, uh, syllables, you can go to spelling, you can go to plurals, anything. It just for, for grade one, beginning constant, ending constant for um, phonics knowledge. All of these are just games that they're gonna give you that you can actually go and choose from. All right, and your students will enjoy doing it. Look at this one. All right, so combine letters to make the word on my list. Enter your name and click begin. So I click chain and you guys will be able, all right? Choose an ending. So I'm gonna choose that. So now I'm gonna spell words, right? So I have, no, all right, but, and you know, 12 more on my list here, continue to do that with your kids, so, all right. So there are lots of games there that you can do, and it's, I, that's why I love this um, website. It's great for every level, right, up to grade eight. So for those that are here and you want to, um, going back to Skill Builder, go up to language arts. There is also maths, as I said, so you can actually go over and it goes right up to grade eight. So you see all the different things, uh, reading practice, you have story element, all of these that you can actually utilize with your students. All right, jumping out of this now. All right, closing that, going over back to this. Let us tie it together. All right, what's my time like, Miss um, Stacey? It's uh, six minutes past 10. All right, so we're gone over. All right, so let us tie it together before I actually jump to uh, question and answer. So this is that digital summer school lesson plan. All right, so I'm planning to do one for upper school so we can tie the, the softwares together. How do I, um, and I'm, we're pushing for out of this session is that the month of November is finished. You're gonna do your post IDRI exam, but what if the result is not what is expected or what you desire of your student? Then you're going to have to go back into intervention mode for the summer. I'm encouraging that we actually have a month long summer school for our students just to cover reading because scientifically it has been proven when a student is able to read, they can function in all other um, subject areas. So we want to focus this summer school or this um, the one month in, in June and just reading for the entire day for every day that we've been in summer school. We did that for, for a month for the digital program and all those students, I must tell you, except for those that have disability, I had a boy who he would learn the information today and he would have done the concept, done the activities, everything got them right. But we, each time he would return the next day, he would have forgotten everything. So we realized that something was, was beyond our reach there and he needed further testing. So you can detect when, when there is a disability, even if you yourself cannot diagnose it, you can detect there is a disability. So you know that we could not really reach a student because no matter how well he did the day, and, and, and when you're supposed to reinforce or whatever, there was nothing to build on. So there was a memory problem with him. So therefore, just telling you that there are certain things you will detect, but it works. So what we do is set out our normal lesson plan. So we don't have to jump to the objectives and stuff. What we'll jump into is the engagement. This follows a combination of Jolly Phonics, Literacy 1, 2, 3, and the Iraq checklist, because the Iraq checklist is what you use to check off it to say that these are what we have actually, milestones are what we have actually reached. So you start out with the letter sound. So we're emphasizing um, S and um, building on it from the, so you're recapitulating um, letter sound for S and then building on building on A for the week that, so we're scaffolding and we're building. So what we'd have done is allow the students, let me walk you through instead of just skipping out and I'm trying to skim. Ask you need to make the letter sound is and identify at least six words associated with, allow the students to make the letter that represents the, um, the sound, invite students to write the upper case and the lower case on the board or in the year, depends on how you want to do it. Teacher will write the letter for the day on the board after which the teacher and the students will sing the song. All right, letter is on the board. It is a letter A, letter A says. So, the, so this is really for grade one moving into grade two because we have just done the idea, right? And we want to get into it. Them going into grade two would be ready for grade two. So we're getting them ready. You put on um, the students minor keys, we sing the song. There is a song that we use from um, this particular website. 
And we um, have fun teaching. It's a very old website, but I, I tend to like it because it gives the students a, to, the opportunity to dance and interact because the sound is bouncy and stuff, but it's very old. All right. You then we go into the read aloud section from the big book, from the Jolly Furnace big book. Right, so you're using all the different materials and you're combining it. We're going to, you notice that they are segmented into 30, 15 minutes or 30 minute sections. We're going through the entire day and we're building on all of that. So we're trying to cover not only phonics, phonemic awareness and phonics. We're doing comprehension. We're trying to build all of these into the one day lesson in terms of reading. So when the students leave, they are so equipped. All right, so they all get right. the story and they get into that. All right, jumping quickly. You go down, you do your blending, all right, in the same letter. We go into the, the online software where you are ordering and putting your alphabets back together. And this is ABC, y'all. We didn't cover that website, but it's on the list. And it's an awesome website. It goes up with many free activities for up to grade six and beyond. I think higher than that. So you can actually go and explore. And there are real games. This person has taken time to build out nice fun games for them to learn um, different aspects of the curriculum go back to the um, starfall.com for them to learn in isolation, the letter sounds and so, all right. Then we continue with them looking at um, learning. Um, let's see which one, this one. Oh, this is one that I learned to read is awesome because what it, it allows them also to be able to, to read, to blend. Suppose I did this. All right, so you can go through. No, it offers a book that goes along with that. Uh, and at. Z, A, K, K, Z. So you see, it allows you to sound it out and it goes. So it's going to give you to bring it to the entire reading these sentences. So you build on it and all of those. So you can go through and you can ask them at the end the comprehension question really to it. There are print out, there are printables that goes with it. All right. So free CD, free phonics printouts. Everybody see at the bottom? All right, let me go down there. And these seats, the one for, for the one we just did a while ago, Zach the Rat, and all the other stories, you see the link there. So what I will do is I'll print out all of these for my students to work at the end. All right. So there is a comprehension one. This is not the one that I wanted to go on. All right. So these are a writing one. Okay, move this around on my page. All right. So there are some others that are there. There is a one with the questions that you can fill in the blank and all those other ones. Let's see if I can look it up. Okay. So I've not used this in a long while, but it's there. All right, so this is a Star Wars Award. This is a certificate they can give them. But the books are there. All of these come, they cut out, they come out with the books and, and they're related to the various stories. They come, um, they have different levels in terms of them writing their journals. All right, so we can go back to this side for them to actually have all of the different materials that are there. All right, so what I'll do is that I'll give you another link for you to actually access the, the various info in terms of the, the printout that you can actually do I guess we'll have to go back to the resource page that I showed you earlier for them to for you to actually be able to manipulate that. All right, so we're coming, we're at the end of this now. I think we have taken up too much time. All right, so this is what I was telling you about that you could print out all of these. This is really one, two, three, four, five, six um, printables that were there. I kind of put them together, condense them. But each of them, and they go along with the story so they can identify the words based on the picture or a picture associated. And in um, chart, they can actually do their spelling over here, the, um, the sentence completion. So it, it covers a gamut of things and Starfall offers all of that. So your enrichment program can cover even far more and can be done far better than this one. All right, so that's it from me. We're going to 
I want to say thank you for being a part of this section. Time for question and answer. All right, so before you go, you'll be asked to complete um, the exit slip, which will offer you the opportunity to get a certificate. So Stacy, you will share with them the link in the chat. So let us go to question and answer if you have any question and answer at this time. Um, any questions for me to answer at this time? Thank you. Or uh, if you have comments that you want to actually share, it's over to you. You can open your mic and go ahead. Or uh, raise your hand so we can make it smooth. Good morning, colleagues. I am Sandra Storbron, we're from Primary and Infant School. Just a comment, just to say that your, inter your presentation was quite straightforward and um, you've given us the opportunity to um, go ahead and explore, use different websites to engage our children, giving them the opportunity to not only learn through us, but on their own. And I must say it was well, presented and I enjoyed sitting and listening to you. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Anyone else? Hi, uh, yes, I just wanna, yes, good morning, I'm, I'm Gary. I just wanna thank you for, I mean, a well um, put together presentation. Actually, it's, it's resource filled. I, I, that's what I love about this. You're actually saying we can go to this specific um, these specific sites and um, engage the students. And I, I, I'm seeing some excellent, excellent sites that are quite interactive. And, and I'm really going to use those. So I really appreciate everything. What I'm asking, are all those sites um, free? free? Yes, they are. Okay, because sometimes all the sites that I've shown some, sites, are... some sites normally pop up um, and they are free for just a, a moment. All yep. right, so Starfall yeah. is always free. Um, Internet yeah, Star Fall. Is, the, is always free. They are free. Yeah, I understand that you're saying that some will pop up to be all, um, free for a moment. Yeah. Oh. No, my job, um, based on my interaction with the ones that have you, they are free. Oh. All right, so thank you very much. You're uh, welcome. All right. Yeah, you've always been doing a good job. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Joe. I must say it's not me alone. It's because I was one of the two of us that actually put this presentation together. So I will just I'm pass sure. on this. I, I know, man. I, I acknowledge that. It, I know. I know straight up. Um, um, you can relate that to them because I know. I know. Um, they're all working together. Okay. All right. You're, you're, their, you're their face right now. All right. Bless all right. You. Bless you. Bless Good you. morning, everyone. Good morning, Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Go ahead. I just want to say excellent, excellent presentation to you and your team, Ms. Marissa. I enjoyed the presentation. I was not bored, even though you were going a bit fast. I would love, I would love if you could share your slide with me so that I could go back to my school and to do this presentation with my team. I am a grade one teacher. All right. Well done to your team. All right, thank you very much. I'm just gonna quickly go back up. I'll be adding it to the classroom. So I'm gonna um, share the link with you to that classroom so you can actually um, be able to access it. Looking for the slide that I put it on. Um, Ms. Morrison also to point out that should they go on any of these websites and it asks them, um, they just get a free trial or ask them to pay, they could try to sign up using their mm -hmm. Ministry of Education mm -hmm. email address and they may just get free access to this site. Awesome. All right, so this is a classroom that we are, I'm working with. I have a classroom that I've been using for... Um, for technology um, enrichment. So this is the, um, the classroom code. So the PowerPoint is not yet in. I'm gonna add it shortly, as soon as we are finished. 
because I didn't want persons that are in the room already to have access before we have done the presentation. So here is it. All right, so um, any, any comments from the chat, Ms. Cummins, as we are closing, anyone else want to speak or just go into the chat? And then over to you, Ms. Cummins, for the closing. Well, so far, we see persons are saying thank you for the recommendations. Very informative, excellent presentation. Um, interesting, interactive, and concise presentation. And a lot of persons are saying great job. Okay. All right. Remember, remember to share again the exit slip with them. So the classroom is not the exit slip, please. The exit slip is going straight to JCC's. Um, um, form for you to actually get your certificate but for those who want access to the PowerPoint we will share it in this classroom so you can quickly take the info all right or maybe I could just share the link let me just copy them out and put them in the chat also all right so it's over to you it was my joy sharing with you today as I serve you I am a servant I have this Mantra that I say that if I'm not if I'm not being used, then I'm, I'm of no use. So going again, if I'm not being used, I'm of no use. And I don't want to be of no use. So use me now. All right. Only things that are good are used. <laughs> All right. Bless you. Over to you, Miss Stacy. All right. So we just want to say thank you, Mrs. Morrison, for prevent, presenting on the team's behalf. And we really appreciate all those who came this morning and be a part of this presentation. We will really appreciate your presence. And I hope that you will take something away from this presentation and go back out there. And I know that you're reaching your children already, but even reach them even more. Make it more interesting, more interactive, more fun. Help them to become more creative and all of that using the technology. We are in an age where technology is basically taking over the world. So when we use these technology, it can make learning more fun and we're able to reach them even better in areas where we were not able to reach them before. So thank you all for coming once again. Thank you, Mrs. Morrison. And enjoy the rest of your day. All right, that's it. Um, I if Miss Deja or Mr. Leslie's in the room. I don't know if they have anything they wanted to add. Or anyone else from JTC? All right, it's not an exception. All right, so we're not seeing any of them, not seeing Mr. Leslie or Ms. Deja. Yes. All right, so it was our pleasure again. We are um, serving you today. Just want to shout out to our team again, the persons that made this possible. Uh, myself, I'm um, Arita Ari Smith, Natalie Evan Smith, Sharon Kirkland, Tasmanica Beckford, Kenisha Johnson, and Stacey Cummins Evans. Um, half of this team is in um, presentation five. So we have five minutes to go. So we're jumping over to presentation five. Bye for now. See you next time. So feel free to join us over on the next presentation as well. Bye-bye. All, right, All right. So I'm going to end. All right. Bye. Send the link. Post the link so we can join. Oh, okay. Um, Stacey, you have the link for presentation five? All right, let me quickly get that. Stop recording.